Welcome conference attendees. I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity for Xu Chao and I to share our work on the development of Hansa Finder, a tool that allows one to search Chinese characters by substructure. This is our homepage of the current tool. We've had three iterations of our tool and we're now on the third, well, that's obvious, th third iteration. Many Chinese characters are considered to have two substructures, the radical and the phonetic. Oh, now it's not working. There we go. Okay. The radical is a substructure which contains meaning. The phonetic is alleged to contain no meaning, but does it? My research partner, Xu Chao, and I have developed a tool that could help determine whether the phonetic. Can you see the, my screen? You can see, people can see my screen, yes, right? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Developed a tool that could help determine whether the phonetic component or any substructure of a Chinese ha uh, Hanza character influences meaning. I will give an overview of the Hansa Finder tool and its potential uses. Chow will describe the creation of our current iteration of the tool and our attempt to make the search engine accessible to researchers. Our Hansa Finder tool searches a database of 88,884 characters. These characters have been redrawn into nodes and lines by three people, Mei Qin Xia, Hui Min Luo, and Wen Qing Huang over approximately a year. The team has turned raster Hansa characters into searchable, decomposable stick and ball graph renderings. The red is the target structure. The blue outlines the rest of the character. The renderings of these nearly 90,000 characters can be searched by a structural query that is as small as one stroke or as large as an entire character or anything between as defined by one node by, sorry, by one node to node section as seen below. We have used a number of methods in order to validate that our tool is finding a large percentage of the characters containing a given substructure. We have data on the following, which I will share as soon as I'm done with this talk in the chat. And you can see, and we actually, oops, we actually have more than this, but I'm just showing what was, uh, anyway, we have more than this. Uh, possible use cases, helping non-native users acquire and retain a target language by creating semantic probability maps of substructures. Donghua, when I was 52, I started studying Chinese. I am 63. This, this method has really helped me, especially uh, remember uh, vocabulary. Researching the weightedness of one substructure, a group of such substructures may have in driving meaning. Researching the pattern of bias and its relationship to structure, researching the relationship of structure to meaning. If we were to find every character containing knife and compare meaning space for clusters, we begin, begin to know if the phonetic, in this case, knife, confers, sorry, I'm struggling with this, confers meaning. And you can see that there's a lot of real associations with pregnancy and even things that have association, fatigue, paralysis of the foot, blessings, happiness, these all have pregnancy associations. Nai has a strong correlation to procreation. This looks like birth. Uh, a child, Z, is coming out of the mother's body, Nai, the meaning is pregnant. The precursors resemble the enlarged body of a pregnant female mammal, and I have also studied Gu-I-G, ancient Egyptian, Sumeru, Sumerian, Maya, Yu, Mayan. We see a, a constant uh, consistency of pregnancy, milk, breast depicted with similar kinds of shapes. So the data breakdown, we have procreation, pregnant breast, baby milk, utilization, things to eat, use, enjoy, deprecation, negative or violent. And then we have a lot of undefined characters for a total of 282 characters. And really it's 286 if you look at the dual character, which sometimes has a Nai component, the G changes into Nai. Helping a new learner predict probability of meaning when seeing a substructure present in a Hansa character, in this case Nai, is one potential use of the Hansa Finder tool. Finding every character with a particular substructure and sorting by meaning could create a semantic probability map such as this one. Uh, you see 49% procreation, deprecation 17%, utilization 34%. Here is a semantic probability map for Fan Chun Pong. This probability map could give clues as to whether or not the phonetic or any other substructures equate to meaningful elements. The map would then be based upon the clustering of meaning space. Yes, some of this is somewhat subjective, but a, a, a large amount of people would probably agree with these clusterings. So we have for Fan Chuan Pong, beast, negative, human, and nature. And we do want to question that human component, especially when you consider Yotai, which is Jewish, has the Fan Chuan Pong uh, radical. 
We can use these lists to study the relationship between substructure and meaning of other substructures besides the radical convey meaning, then there is an untapped area for research as well as a new method for better language acquisition. Thank you for all you wonderful people and organizations and websites. It has been invaluable for us to do this work. And thank you for the Digital Orient Orientalist Virtual Workshop and Conference, June 26, 2021, and to the organizers. And I will now hand this over to Xu Chao. Thank you. Uh, you're really fast. <laughs> I'm trying to not take too much time because <laughs> I figured people you. can watch it later and stop it. So, okay. Um, so, Jennifer used this tool to um, have some fun, I guess. And I will um, focus more on how some fundamental ideals uh, we use in the development when we do this project. Um, can I have this one? Um, Jennifer has this idea of substructure searching on Chinese characters for like 10 years. And uh, we started to work on this like three and a half years ago. At that time, we, we did some research. We wanted to find is there, and we wonder whether there is such tool. And, we, and there, there was no. So we decided to make one by ourselves. Uh, there are three major, major uh, versions. Um, each of them is highly dependent on how we look at, how we represent a Chinese character. In the first version, we represent a Chinese character as a sequence of stroke and use stroke information to do computation. In the second version, we use our encoder to encode a raster image into a fixed size vector, uh, so called fingerprint vector. And we use that vector for substructure searching. In the current version, we turn a character into a graph like you just see. Um, Graph is good for two reasons. First, graph is just a collection of nodes and uh, edges. In a more general sense, it's objects plus relationships. Graph is much more compact than images. Uh, one easy example is like for uh, image, if you want to have a sufficient resolution that still covers the, you, you, you can still recognize substructure. It has to be like we did, uh, 100 by 100 that's 10,000 uh, values. But for a graph, for this nine character, it has nine nodes and eight ed edges. For each node, it only takes two numbers to describe the X and Y coordinate. And for one edge, it takes two numbers, which is source and a target node index. So it only takes 34 numbers to represent all the information. It is way more compact. Uh, the other reason is, um, this, it, this nose and the edges, especially the edges, carries uh, structural information much more directly than images. Nowadays, people use convolution uh, blocks to extract uh, local information, uh, local features from images. But if you can define, you can use that directly. Why bother to use another block to extract? Um, once we have this broad uh, representation for character, we can view the substructure searching problem as a subgraph uh, searching problem. And this problem can be rephrased as a no selection process like this. Let's say this Oranger uh, structure is our target structure. It has nine nodes. And this blue uh, collection of nodes is like a bag of possible nodes you can take. Um, it takes nine, so there are nine steps. At each step, you need to take one node out of this blue bag as candidates. So there are uh, 17 to the power of nine possibilities, which is uh, 118 trillions. This is good because we know solution is there. This is terrible because the number is too large. Uh, it takes too long to validate all of them. So we developed several tricks to prune the uh, decision tree. Uh, one is uh, we don't want repeated nodes. The second is this pol polarization ideal. I say the gray one is our previous uh, structure, the best fit. And we want to find something like this orange uh, one. For this uh, blue one, it's on the right, it's on the up. So uh, it both hits on X and Y. This one is also because it hits on the Y axis, but not on the X. This one is uh, opposite. So we can use this kind of 
geometrical relationship to describe the difference. And the third idea is skeleton. Let's say this origin origin um, um, pattern has three connections here, and this blue candidate has only two hits. One, this one is missing here, so it has two or three hits. Um, the last one is posture. It's, it's kind of like four patterns have same skeleton. It's the same character, but different people have different styles. Um, posture captures such style uh, features. Um, for a uh, trigonal here, there's three relative uh, arrows here, four, one, two, 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 three, and three, two, one. And for each of them, we can record a number uh, for the angle, zero to 65, you got it. And for the blue one, we can do a similar thing. And we can do, uh, we can calculate the difference row by row or edge by edge and use these numbers to construct a difference uh, for the posture. Uh, with such, uh, with these tricks, uh, we developed the prototype uh, version of our current tool. It works really amazingly. Amazing like uh, so um and with this so what we did is we we developed three versions of substructure searching. Um stroke information is great, but it only covers nine thousand characters. But we want to have a larger coverage for research purpose. So we have the second version, but um it's it's a convolutional neural network, so it suffers from uh, the interpolation. Uh, issues we cannot explain what those 64 numbers mean and uh, it's not reliable. Um, we that's why we have the third version, uh, the graph representation. Uh, with the, with these tools, um, they can be the building blocks for other Chinese uh, research and the learning process. And Jennifer did some very interesting cases. Talk to her; it's going to be fun. Um, and you can use this tool to do other uh, funny things. Use your imagination. Um, we suffer from several problems for this graph representation idea. One is um, like this dot character. Uh, we find it's very hard to unify the, uh, the rules to draw, like these two nodes is separated here. In some cases, people um, join them or separate them on this horizontal line rather than branch here. The other one is uh, we current, the current algorithm cannot tolerate the, the arrows in like have one extra node, you know, extend it a little bit for a uh, missing one. Um, these are problems we want to, uh, we will to work on. Uh, for our future plans, uh, we are looking for ways to protect our graph data before making it publicly accessible. It will be in the end, but <laughs> we, we want to protect our work. Uh, the other thing is, uh, during this process, we find it's really hard uh, to make a consistent uh, rules for label rejoin. And we, we met a lot of boundary cases. So we want to uh, unify and document, uh, make some documents about this. And the search thing is, uh, I try to deploy this uh, searching algorithm with JavaScript onto a browser, but it's too slow. It takes about 180 hours to do one search. Uh, it's a nightmare. Uh, we will release a uh, C++ or Python version uh, GUI client. The, the current version is written in Python with NumPy and uh, um, NumPy. Um, the, the website we have, hansfinder.com, currently is based on the second idea, the vector idea. Um, we think uh, for the third version, it will be a kind of data center you can push and uh, pull substructure searching results for your purpose if you want to share with other people. Um, this is all I want to talk. Thank you all for having us. Thank you for our teammates um, for helping us building this tool and uh, the open source community for uh, without them it's impossible. And uh, thanks to Jennifer and her family. Uh, without her this is impossible. She is an amazing female. <laughs> um, yes, um, do you have any questions? That thank you. Did that so search you We're searching a character. How, where are we with that? Oh, it's still running. <laughs> it's only, it has only been fifteen minutes. So it oh. takes about. 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> it takes, well, thank you very much.
We can share it on chat, perhaps. Yeah, I'll, I can share later. Yes, please, please do that. Um, okay, so thank you for that. We are ready to take questions. We have a good uh, five minutes, seven minutes. Um, if anyone has any, raise your hand, type it in the chat. I have a couple, but I don't want to take advantage of the fact that I'm running this show to uh, always jump in. Yes, Willis Monroe. Monroe, sorry. Hi, thank you. That was really fascinating. Um, this is a question coming out of ignorance. I work in cuneiform, so I'm not very well versed uh, with Chinese writing. But my get, my understanding is that you at the beginning you showed that there is an element of compositionality to some of these signs. Um, you can combine two of them, get another meaning. Um, and I've been working on a project dealing with uh, proto elamite, which is um, kind of adjacent to early cuneiform. And the nice thing there is it's undeciphered. So we have no preconceptions coming in. And we've been trying to figure out if there is compositionality uh, there. Uh, but again, we have no idea going into it. So we have to sort of do a visual analysis and look for context, et cetera. Um, so my question with the graph-based approach is that you really can start to, as you said, look at these substructures. Do you think that you might start to um, discover uh, aspects of compositionality which are otherwise not known? So not necessarily two signs, but maybe two aspects of signs that can be added together that, that can equal something uh, that people hadn't previously considered, right? Because of course it's a living language. Um, I want to first confirm that I understand the problem properly. And are you saying like we, what we are doing now is uh, we establish these um, Shocks with graph methods. It's, it's kind of like have limited space or possible structures there. And you are curious about could, could, could it possible, you know, help define it when you are facing raster images to identify uh, some structures like skeleton structures that is outside of the. Um, yeah, I'm interested in whether or not there could be sub sections of signs that could have meaning, right? That you haven't identified yet. So like yeah. a particular arm that is added to multiple characters that up till now people haven't recognized has any kind of inherent meaning, but through your subgraph analysis, you can see that, you know, all of these things have similar context or something, right? This is exactly our goal. This is exactly yeah. our goal. <laughs> and, and to be perfectly honest, this has come out of a research that I did helping our son go from the 44th percentile to the 89th percentile on those <laughs> English tests because he was struggling. And I started looking at Greek and Latin root words and realized that there was a pattern based on bias and that we could be harnessing bias to understand language more quickly. I believe that female mammals are the underpinning of written language. And if you look at Sumerian, Egyptian, uh, even um, linear B, you can see that the shape of V has meant female for 6,400 years. If you look at Denise Mantvesserat's token data, she did a great deal of work showing that the Sumerian characters had relationships between, uh, the token data has a relationship with Sumerian characters and the token data is about, about 10,000 years old. You can see that a sheep is a circle with a plus and U, E, W, E, female sheep is a circle with a plus with a V. So that character is 6,400 years old. And we see this in Chinese and other languages, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so I'm just putting at the title of a paper in the chat that we found very useful when we were trying to do this type of analysis of kind of sub aspects of graphs of, of characters. So it, it, you might find it, find it useful. It's this OCS PCS score, which can be really useful for understanding um, the, the regularity of sub aspects of characters. So if, if you're interested, I, I highly encourage you to read that paper. You you put the paper in chat? I just, put the title, the title of the paper. Yeah, oh, I, you can I just Google search it. Wonderful, I'll search it. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have thank a you. question from, yeah, thank you. Well, uh, we have a, a question from Tillman. He wrote it in the chat, but please give it voice to Okay, thank you. So this is, I think, um, a question in a similar direction, or even um, the the idea that you described um, in the beginning of your talk. I wonder if you uh, already found like some 
interesting meanings that lies hidden in the presumably phonetic uh, component of the characters. So something that um, uh, strikingly reappears um, in a certain semantic field. Um, can you talk a little bit about this? Uh, we can look at this one page here. Let me see if I can get this up here. Uh, am I still sharing my screen? I don't think so. Here, let's go here. Share screen. And this share. Uh, if we look at this, start away from current slide. We can see that we have looked at this, what I call a B doppelganger. And if we look at the alphabet, the alphabet used to go A, B, V, G. So B and V have a very close association. I believe they're female mammals, breasts and vaginas. So if we look at here, we see B pregnant, to be pregnant, small. Well, women are smaller than men. Uh, milk women's breast nurse, small fish, spawn row, late. These are concerns when you're pregnant. Slow, thicker, fatigue, paralysis of the foot, blessings, happiness. What character has a relationship with fatigue, paralysis of the foot, and blessings, happiness, but pregnancy? Uh, and now people will question this, and this is where the subjective part comes in. Why is neon there? And you notice this is not a word we use anymore. Nihong is the word for neon now. We don't use this character. It has fallen out of favor. I believe it's because neon and lactating breasts are both enticing. Uh, it's not probably, you know, I'm telling you things that uh, I'm the messenger. Uh, fill overflowing surplus to accumulate. All of these could have relationships with pregnancy to profit. Well, we know prostitution is one of the oldest uh, professions. Uh, buttress battlements, we have the word fortress, which has a, in Chinese uh, has a strong association. I think it has three V's in it. Um, hide, avoid, superior, talented. You're very talented if you can produce babies. Uh, so there, you know, I'm going, you know, this, I'm sure is subjective and could be questioned by people, but I think it, it's so obvious. I mean, when you look across the board at all these written languages, it really is, um, I think, very obvious. Why wouldn't it be? Female mammals are the, are, are we have milk, offspring, and fun for males. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. So, so this um, you're also using this to um, do some cross language um, research. Um, yes. Stuff, comparing different scripts. Okay, very fascinating. I should tell you, I have a website, originofalphabet.com, and I have all of this data on. I'm sharing it now. Originofalphabet.com. I have ancient Egyptian, Sumerian, uh, many Latin, Greek, Hebrew. I've looked at a lot of languages over the last 12 years. Thank you. Thank you.